My guest today is Jim Woolley. Jim, how are you? Pretty good. Been a while. It's been, when was the last time you were on my show? Uh, you, you're asking me the year? <laughs> it was a long time. Yeah, I don't know how long ago that was. Probably about six years ago, I'm guessing. I think, um, so I went up to episode 530 something right now, yeah. I think. And uh, I think you were in the, the double digits. I, I was thinking double digits Less as well. Than yeah, yeah. We, we were still youngins at that point. That might be a record for the yeah. longest time in between. <laughs> Yeah, we were going, we had we had black hair. Uh, not as much gray hair. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, what um, you were you at VS Lab? Yeah. Uh, how many times have you spoken at VS Lab? Uh, pro, well, it's less than ten, but still a fair number, probably. Okay, more than ten. Less than ten, but more than ten. Yeah. I spoke. This is my fourth time. Yeah. What did you speak on? Uh, this time I spoke on C sharp seven, Rosalind, and static analysis. Hmm. And so there's sort of an overlap between the two sets of the, those pieces of those, and hmm. so. Uh, uh, judging exactly what level we want to get to in, in each one of those talks is kind of a trick, but uh, there's definitely an overlap between the two of those, and really the focusing on how can you leverage, not necessarily building your own, but how can you leverage the tooling to be able to improve your code and, and get things better in that regard. Yeah, okay. Uh, and tell me about the static analysis, is it? I'm not yeah. with that at all. Static analysis is essentially the ability to take a look at code and find information about that code, okay. even if that code can't be compiled. So trying to find code smells, uh, recommending best practices and patterns on things, you know, finding memory leaks uh, that would happen when it actually ran. So for example, if you have something which derives from my disposable and you're not disposing it, then it's very possible that you're going to have a resource leak, whether that's memory or external resource. And so if we can have tools which can find disposables that you're not actually calling dispose on by using a using clause, for example, then we can actually benefit your code, right? Okay. Uh, it can also find things that might be domain-specific errors. So let's say you have a method like URI that takes a string, and you're going to pass a string in, right? Well, if you just pass any string at runtime, you're going to throw an exception. But if you would then inspect that string and say, is this a valid URI before, you know, as you're developing it, hmm. then you might be able to not have that runtime exception, hmm. fix it ahead of time, and really move the needle to the left on when the developer is able to find and fix their issues quicker and easier. All right, and you mentioned Roslyn, which is mm -hmm. a, a kind of a compiler or a parse code parser, right? So Roslyn was the code name for the revised versions of VB and C Sharp's compilers. And they started back around 2010, rewriting compilers, and they were dogfooding VB and C Sharp. And it took them about five years to fully bake it. Hmm. Because it's one thing just to write a, part, a, a compiler which can do the lexing and the parsing and you know, create code that can be executed and create your DLLs and things like that. It's another one to have it so that it has the performance that can still work as the developers are typing. That's a challenge. Right? That's a big challenge, right? And so getting that performance really good was one of the keys. The other one they wanted, really wanted to do was make it extensible so that people could add things like these analyzers uh, without having to rebuild the entire compiler. And so the ability to then just add to Visual Studio, add a NuGet package, for example, to be able to add maybe a analyzer that detects if you're using Azure in the wrong way. Oh. Or if you are trying to access a database uh, improperly, or uh, let's say you're uh, writing the JSON.NET uh, DLL and you want to make sure that what you're coming, what's coming into your application is valid JSON. You know, some of those kinds of things are things that you'd probably be able to do with this by adding those libraries with your client libraries, for example, or or other open source. So I work on a open source project called Codecracker. Uh, it's, it's, um, it has a bunch of different analyzers and code fixes in it, uh, being able to do all sorts of you know, various types of things. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, out, it's available on GitHub if anybody wants to check it out and, and play with it. And so, uh, yeah. Let's do the URL. Yeah, it's, I think it's uh, you know, GitHub slash Codecracker. Right, we'll put that in the Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and you're using this uh, static analysis to do your code writing? Yeah. Uh, so I'm trying to get a handle on uh, how much of this, so Roslyn is a compiler that's accessible to you, extensible and accessible to you. Right. It used to be compilers with these secret things. Yeah. You, know, you say, you know, build, rebuild all. That old black and box. Then, and then you would go uh, do the sort fight, like in the XKCD cartoon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're compiling, yeah. carry on. <laughs> uh, but now it's actually, it's, it's, it's more transparent. I can get the results in real time. Yeah. That. 
How much of this analysis you're talking about is done for you by Roslyn? How much is it work that I have to do? Where, where is that hand off? Oh, uh, well, the, I mean, you can write your own. I can write my own what? I'll write your own analyzer. Yeah, okay, so write an analyzer. What, yeah. what part of it is my responsibility? Uh, essentially, they already handled the lexer and parser. Okay. So they parse out the expression tree and the graph of all of everything's happening inside of your code, that abstract syntax tree, and basically allow you to access that. You can't mutate anything on that because in order to make the performance good enough, they had to make everything immutable. Okay. But you can replace pieces of that. Hmm. And usually this is all this is being done at uh, development time. So when you see those little uh, light bulbs that say, hey, you might want to do this, yeah. more than likely those are actually built in Roslyn. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, and actually Visual Studio itself comes with a whole slew of uh, Roslyn built-in analyzers and code fixers. The, the analyzer basically says, hey, there might be a problem. The code fix says, there might be a problem, and here's how you fix it. Oh, I see. Okay. So you have the ability to have either one of those at that point. And, and so uh, the audience for your talk, were they people that are building these analyzers, or people that are consuming those analyzers? Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what, uh, for most people, how mm -hmm. they need to skill, and what parts of them are taken care of for them. Yeah. So most people out there are probably going to be consumers rather than producers. Consumers of? Consumers of existing libraries, like your, your existing library. analyzers, right? Because okay. uh, they're not probably going to be writing their own. It takes a lot of work to try to build your own. Okay. And I'm... One of the reasons why I joined on helping with, with these analyzer projects is to help lear myself learn about them. You know, okay. and uh, otherwise, if I didn't have that incentive, then I probably wouldn't learn it. But I found as I've been learning it that I've learned the language is a heck of a lot better. Oh, okay. And all the ins and outs about you know, languages, and because there's it, it, there's lots there's a, a large surface area when you're actually dealing with Roslyn, trying to build one. So most people probably aren't going to be building their own. But they can take advantage of ones that are out there already and be able to use those and consume those and improve their code and find those code smells and find variables that aren't used or find memory leaks or uh, domain-specific issues that are going to be causing problems. We, we, we've had analyzers for quite a while now. Sure. Remember back in 2005 when FXCOP first came out, right? And FXCOP comes out, people install it on a, a code base that has a million lines of code. And they just say, ignore this error, ignore this well, error. Well, they, they, <laughs> they see the 2,000 errors because that was the limit on how many you could see it upon, at any time. <laughs> they they take the hard effort of trying to figure out, what, how do I solve all those 2,000? And they finally solve them and it says, oh, here are 2,000 more. <laughs> and at that point, they, were, they just did uninstall an FX cop, right? Very oh. Yeah. So one of the things that they've actually done now is not only have these extensible uh, analyzers, but also, and, and many of them are, are Roslyn based at this point. Uh, they've actually uh, done a whole effort of rewriting uh, style cop, for example, using Roslyn. Um, and it's a, it's a great library out there. Sam Harwell did that one. Uh, he's, he did such a great job that they actually hired him on the CHR team. Good deal. Yeah. That's the key to get hired. Yeah, there you go. Just go out there and do a really good library that somebody <laughs> likes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you're probably going to be a, a consumer of these in various ways. And then, but also know how do you consume those? How do you uh, customize them? So, how do you turn them off and on? Right? Uh, I get into that with my analyzer talk in terms of how do you figure out which ones you want to use. But sometimes, if you install like StyleCop and uh, the .NET analyzers and you know code cracker, sometimes they don't agree with each other. Yeah, or they don't agree with me. Maybe yeah. I want to use var and they want to use mm -hmm. uh, the explicit declaration yeah. and or vice versa. Mm -hmm. I have my food, my yeah. opinions on that. Maybe and some of that's actually built into Visual Studio as well. Mm -hmm. So there's um, uh, the naming style and code style uh, tools within Visual Studio, which you can then use to customize them those yourself. And I get into that in my analyzer talk. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a downside to those, however, because those will follow you and roam with your versions of Visual Studio, but it won't work for everybody else on the team. Oh, I see. Okay. So at that point, what you want to do is you can add an editor config. It's dot editor config uh, to your project or to your solution, oh. and you can customize all of that inside of there. I that. And with that, then you check that into your source repository, and now everybody else in your team is guaranteed to you get. The right. Very cool. Right. And so editor config. Yeah. Editor to con editor config. Not editor to dot config. It's dot editor config. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, the Git world out there sort of starts with those. And it's not only for C sharp with editor config. 
It will work also with JavaScript or XML or JSON. And you know, for example, if you want to make sure that everything is indented for spaces, because you never use tabs. Right? You, know, you want tabs, not spaces, right? Oh, well, tabs yeah. turn into spaces in my ID. In your IDE, yeah. Um, but if you're you know, manually editing, you, know, you might want to make sure. And that's something that you can configure inside of the editor config and have that guaranteed across all of your projects. But you can also say, well, with XML, I want two spaces. With uh, C Sharp, I want four spaces. Like and uh, it has the ability to then customize that uh, and, and keep that going through the rest of your team to that point as well. So some cool stuff there. Tell me a little bit about uh, the code cracker. Is that mm -hmm. what, what does that do? Uh, it's again one of the browsers and the analyzers. We have, I think, about 100 different analyzers in there. Oh, uh, anything cool. from um, detecting empty catch blocks okay. and recommending up to three different ways of fixing that, uh, detecting that your uh, class file is not ordered in the proper way, uh, you know, if you don't have your constructors and then your uh, fields and your parameters and your events and, and then alphabetize inside of that, and just with one click of a button you can rename, you refactor that whole thing and fix it all up. That's okay. right. I didn't know it was a preferred order. Yeah. Well, there, there is one. What comes first, constructors or properties? Constructors, I think. Okay. Yeah. If you don't like it, you can turn it off, or you can actually, it, it's extensible where you can actually add additional code fixers to do a different sorting if you want, right? Mm -hmm. So right now, for example, it doesn't uh, uh, really honor regions, mm -hmm. and so it might be good to have somebody come out there, and it's open source, right? So anybody yeah. can uh, try to contribute to this, uh, go out there and maybe sort inside regions, well, you know, and not sort the region externally as well. Well, it's a bigger, product, bigger challenge and bigger task, yeah. but uh, it's something which might be interesting for somebody to take a look at. And sometimes... Really just stop using regions. Yeah, that, that's probably better. Um, but sometimes one of the best ways of learning it is by saying, hey, I want to make this small change. Because it forces you to try to think about how it works I see, yeah. and just really start to learn it. If you just look at the code, you're usually probably not going to learn it very well. But when you start to work, you know, start to play with it and, and try, try it, that's when you're going to learn it. I tell everybody in my sessions that so the reason why I leave bugs in the code that I have on GitHub for the demos is so that they can learn. The learning experience. Okay. Yeah. I totally like to steal that. Yeah. <laughs> because honestly, that's how I learned, right? I learned, I'm not a computer programmer by trade. No, what are you? I'm, I did a music I was a music education major in college and the music theory, and uh, now I'm all self taught in computers. Uh, so, YouTube, uh, yeah. 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 Um, and I started teaching myself how to program by typing in articles from Compute Magazine. Okay. And so we're going back into the 80s or so at this point, uh, showing my age. Um, but uh, you know, learn how to do that, and then inevitably, something's not going to work. Right. So then you have to peek and poke and find out what exactly you need to change. Yeah. And, uh, that's when you learn. You want to make one small change just to yeah. add a feature to it. Yeah. And then everything mm -hmm. goes crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and again, coming back to the subject of analyzers, that's one of the great things about analyzers, they can teach as well. So if you don't know the proper uh, uh, syntax and such for disposing and, and uh, iDisposable implementation where you handle you know, GC collect and some of those kinds of things, if you don't know the preferred way of doing that, then one of these analyzers can tell you, hey, you're not doing the right way and click on this help to actually find what the best way is and why. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Where are you speaking next? Oh boy, I got a, a big one coming up here. So I'm actually doing five conferences in 11 days. Wow, is this one of them? No, it's not. So, uh, uh, so this, gonna, this is going to be in October. I guess I got a couple of weeks off here in October. And then beginning of October, I'm going to be in uh, the Poconos at TechMash. Oh, I've been there. I've been and first one. and then go right from there. The water park. To, yeah, yeah, one of those indoor water parks at Uh Go right from there to the Phoenix Code Camp no. on Saturday. And then uh, Dev Up in St. Louis. And then VS Live in San Diego, and then uh, Dallas uh, Tech Fest. Or it sounds good. I've not been to that. Yeah, it's yeah. my first time. It'll be my first time actually going outside of the airport in Dallas. So oh. it'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, so that's going to be my big blow off at the end of the year here, and then I get to rest at the beginning of the next year. I think at this point. Yeah. Thank you so much. Been a pleasure. And don't forget to tell your friends about the great technology that Roslyn and Code Nanos users are. Thank you.